Hello everyone, my name is Ilva Tare and this is Balkans Debrief, an online interview series of the Atlantic Council's Europe Center here in Washington, D.C. Even though the situation between Kosovo and Serbia is as tense as it has been in the recent memory, with the bloody Ukraine war as backdrop, the broader situation in the region remains unchanged. Official EU enlargement still feels far away, and the best prospect to improving the lives of citizens who are in the region involves economic development. With me to talk about the role that investment and private enterprise can play are Morgin Sahani and Diana Gligorievich. Thank you both for talking to Balkan Zibrith. Welcome. Thank you so much for the invitation. Murgim uh, is the co-founder and the CEO of Girafa, a US-registered company operating in Kosovo and Albania, building an internet services delivering platform in the Southeast Europe. Girafa is both an e-commerce and a search engine to perhaps oversimplify it for the audience. It is striving to become Amazon and Google for the region. Diana Gligorievich is the co-founder of uh, Telegroup System, an IT solution provider and telecommunication company from Serbia that has grown into an industry leader with reach beyond the immediate region. Diana uh, had an established career in the US and then decided to invest in her own country where she built a successful team that sets the trends and influenced the professional advancement of the industry. At Telegroup, I was very pleased to learn that 38% of the workers are women thanks to Diana's vision to support women and encourage young girls to get an education in IT. Diana, how challenging was that uh, to work especially with women and encourage them for the IT? Well, it was really very changing. On the other hand, it was very stimulative. And I was very happy that I had an excellent support of a number of U.S. companies, which are my partners like Microsoft, Cisco, Oracle, which uh, decided to help me invest in mentoring and uh, devoting the time of their engineers in uh, mentor-to-mentee education, which we actually established through American Chamber of Commerce in Belgrade. And uh, the result was really amazing. And I'm very satisfied that after 15 years of devoted attention to introduce IT to girls and to uh, young women, we are today completely different community than we were 15 years ago. That's a uh, very uh, good, re- relieving to, to hear that. Uh, Mergim, while many educated and young professionals are leaving the region to emigrate in developed countries, you decided to return from New York to Pristina and invest in a challenging market like internet services, uh, seeing an opportunity to develop a sector that is, was being neglected by the big uh, internet companies. Girafa, I read, has grown 9,000% from uh, 2016 to 2021, numbers that can only be possible in a fast-growing environment. What made you go back to Kosovo to invest and how difficult was for you to convince investor, investors to support your idea? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ilva, for the invitation and the pleasure to be here. Hello, Diana. Um, so I spent about 12 years in New York and um, I studied there, but I also worked for a few companies and in academia. But eventually, I am born and raised in Kosovo, and I will come back often and visit Kosovo and the region, Albania, North Macedonia. And, and I would, you cannot escape the fact that you would compare, you would see the quality of life, especially when it comes to, I studied computer science. So for me, that's the prism I was looking at. And you would see the differences and the opportunities that are in the region versus what they exist in developed economies, such as the United States. and. Eventually, one realizes this very quickly that this region is really being neglected. It's one of the most neglected regions in Europe, the Western Balkans in particular. It's on the heart of Europe that's been the most neglected when it comes to technology, innovation, and services that can be done through uh, online. So I saw it as a great opportunity for this to focus. I had a background in technology and the expertise needed to start building the critical pieces of the puzzle of the whole, what we call internet economy for the region. And I I took a big step by uh, leaving the United States, leaving behind what I had built there so far. One might go as far as say, leaving behind the American dream and coming and starting um, 
Girafa as an internet service provider for the region, not just for Kosovo. And it started as an opportunity. Eventually, the team and I realized that we actually could do it. We started producing numbers and growth that were impressive. And today, if I may add, it has become a responsibility because we think if we don't do it for our own home, for our own region, I don't think others will come and do it for us. Amazon does not plan to be here for a while. It's not here. I think we should do that. And if other services are missing and the, there is a demand for it, it's our job and responsibility the people from this region to actually start building it and develop it to the, to the level it deserves. Well, I agree with that, but uh, with uh, that responsibility comes also challenges and problems. Diana, uh, what were for you the main weaknesses and strengths of uh, investing in Serbia from your personal experience? Well, uh, I would not really call them weaknesses, but there were certain setbacks, which was uh, accepting the new technologies in the most proper way and uh, devoting uh, the attention of the community and society to the latest technology that was uh, that could have been implemented in the regional or local aspects. Uh, since uh, Telegroup and I myself were uh, politically non-biased and we tried to keep our uh, profile always strictly professional, it was even a more challenging task. But we succeeded and I think that this is the proof that once you stick to knowledge, expertise, and competencies, you will always be accepted in the long run. You just need the perseverance and the focus. And this is what I did with my company, and I'm very proud to say we just uh, not present in Serbia, but in whole or former Yugoslavian, ex-Yugoslavian countries. And we have more than 500, 500 employees in our system working coordinately on projects which again shows uh, when you speak about knowledge and expertise, everything is possible. And I think this is also reflecting exactly what uh, Marjin was telling. I mean, his focus was on bringing the services. My focus was bringing the services, knowledge and expertise internationally accepted and uh, uh, applicable into local environment. This is difficult, but this is also very intriguing when you see that it is developing and the community is benefiting from it. Mergim, how was your personal experience of investing in Kosovo? There is a lot of strength here, Ilva. One of them is the young population. That means you have talent, you have hungry people, ambitious and highly motivated. But it also means that if you release or launch a new product, even though it may be novel idea for the region, but nothing new from the rest of the world, such as buying online, the adoption rate, it's highly impressive beyond any benchmark in the world. The way new services are adopted because of the young population, it's far much faster than anywhere expected from other cases and other companies that have grown. Second is an untapped market. There are so many opportunities. Once the region is ignored, that means there are a lot of opportunities here waiting to be executed. It's not so much about the idea at this point, it's about the execution. Uh, the disadvantages or weaknesses, I think, are it's so hard to attract investors because there is so much prejudice about the market. Uh, you see, the region is not necessarily, you know, it's not New York, it's not London, it's not Berlin, but I don't think it's as bad as it seems from the outside. And I think that type of prejudice uh, that exists for the region, it has played a, a negative role in attracting not just investors, but I think global companies to be present in the region. That's starting to change, however, slowly. And the last piece is each country in the Western Balkan is relatively small when it comes to venture capital investment. But however, as a region as a whole, it seems to be pretty sizable, but very fragmented, which this presents as a weakness is a good opportunity for somebody to consolidate the market and focus it on, on it as a whole. Considering the situation, uh, the uh, unfinished uh, conflict between Serbia and Kosovo, uh, in your businesses, does politics play a role in the invi in, uh, investment uh, climate? Uh, have your companies had any impact of heated political rhetoric? Is the conflict, as I said, between your countries impacting your businesses? Diana? Well, um, I started my business and uh, presence in Kosovo in 2006, and uh, Telegroup Kosovo still exists over there. 
uh, I'm personally investing and trying to maintain the market active. For us, uh, I'm not very satisfied with the size of activities that we are having. But on the other hand, I could not only blame it on politics. It's also about uh, the number of people we could attract. It's about uh, the competencies that we can bring to this uh, territory. And we are trying to do as best as we can. And I always say that perseverance is the best model of success. So I'm still there. But yes, in in certain uh, areas, I could say that uh, political uh, tensions are inflecting or reflecting the decision-making of the buyer, of the clients. And sometimes they are just simply reluctant to bridge the situation of politics and just turn to technology. But I think it's relevant to everywhere and every place you are. It's not just very typical for our region. And I think that Morgan will probably agree with me. Do you, Morgan? Well, Do you agree I with think, Diana? Yeah. Well, with some of the things Diana says, I agree. And a lot of ideas that Diana does, um, which is inspirational, how she has managed to grow throughout the region, I definitely agree. On the other side, in particular for Girafa, we deal the biggest barrier because of political crisis between Kosovo and Serbia, it's primarily related to foreign investment for us. It doesn't necessarily impact us operationally or conducting the daily day-to-day -day business. It's more of how it's perceived from the outside. On the recent events of the few weeks, last four or five weeks or so, I've received calls almost on a daily basis from our existing shareholders from the United States or Czech Republic, or even new investors where they kind of concern well, what's happening. Even though once you are here, the situation is tense, but not as tense as when it's read on the headlines of the so major outlet. So politics does play a role in shaping the region's perception, not for good, for the foreign investment. And I think politicians can do a little bit more to actually improve, not just for each country, but also for the region as a whole, I think they can do more. Uh, Morgan, have you ever considered investing in Serbia? Yes, uh, we did, and we are in the process of doing so. The whole Western Balkans, including Serbia, it's part of our target market. And we even plan to go outside of Western Balkans, including Bulgaria and uh, Greece. But Serbia is one of our markets, absolutely. It's one of the largest countries in terms of economic value in the Balkans. We need a follow-up interview once you are in the market to, to see how, how the situation is there. Diana, how about you? And uh, you said that you have a presence in Kosovo. How about in the other uh, Western Balkan countries? I want to know more about regional cooperation uh, and um, businesses being present in these countries. Well, we are present in all of the Western Balkan countries. Northern Macedonia, Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, Slovenia, Serbia, to that matter, Bulgaria as well. Al Albania is missing, I see. And uh, we have ambitions in Albania, and it's not missing, it's on agenda. And uh, since we are cooperating with the Hungarian company 4IG on a strategic level, and they have acquired uh, two operators in Tirana, uh, Alp Telecom and One. We are now together with them developing their uh, portfolio for IPTV and OTT solutions, which is in video streaming, probably the latest technology that could be acquired in, in Tirana and in Albania. So yes, I'm, I'm very much uh, devoted to the whole region because I do not believe in individual markets. I believe in integration. I believe in the region. I believe in everything that is related to um, not just cooperation, but also a uh, possibility to bring this area where we work, both Marjan and myself, into one of those that will be the leaders uh, in, in Europe in the next uh, five, ten years, and not always being the the last resort of uh, investment of the new technologies. And I believe that it is our responsibility as businessmen to do it and to make it happen and to help uh, the people attract uh, the vision that we have and accept the possibilities that we can offer them and just don't uh, flow out of these markets, but actually return and come back. And I'm very happy to say that in Telegroup today, 
around 10% of the people have been uh, formerly uh, employed in Netherlands, uh, Middle East, uh, Emirates, uh, also Africa, UK, but have now returned and worked for us uh, on the projects in the region, which I think is beneficial for everybody and most importantly beneficial for Europe. Yeah, Morgan, what was your experience in, in uh, operating Giraffa in Albania too, since you are uh, there? Did, is there any prejudice that you are an American company mainly operating in Kosovo or how have you felt that uh, situation? Yeah, so we started operating in Albania even before the last year, but we started also in North Macedonia last year. So we do not have any prejudice in Albania Northern Macedon- or in North Macedonia in regard to being an American company or primarily with a headquarters in Pristina. Uh, like for instance, in North Macedonia, our whole website is in North Macedonian language, in Macedonian language, but Macedonian currency. Uh, so it doesn't, for the end consumer, what it matters is the product, the service and the price. For as long as those are met, there is no such interruption when it comes to something bigger because we primarily, in our e-commerce, we serve customers on a B2C level, business to consumer level. So far, we haven't seen any of the challenges in Albania or North Macedonia at all. It has been almost, almost as smooth as operating in Kosovo, with certain exceptions. But overall, I don't think, not not that there is no complaint, but I think there is things to congratulate of how well the hospitality has been. It makes me very happy to hear that, especially because we mostly uh, talk and see uh, what happens in the re- region and sometimes conflicts take over and the headlines that Mergim uh, mentioned before uh, makes the region look not good. But talking to you and uh, listening to your optimism about investing in the market in the region is uh, pretty impressive. Diana, uh, what is uh, Telegroup Systems vision for the future? Um, in the region and, and beyond? Well, uh, of course, we are uh, looking into covering all the territories in the region. But uh, again, uh, our main focus is to bring the latest technologies, which is now very much focused on um, cybersecurity, on applications, especially video streaming applications, but also integration of technical and cybersecurity into one solution and capacity that we will be able to provide for the whole territory. And I believe that uh, this is exactly where the whole world is uh, heading in, in the investment plan. And we believe that uh, with uh, the competencies and with the partners that we have, we will be able to actually digitalize the region in the same way or even better than the rest of Europe is now uh, hoping to do. And we are very much focused on it and very much uh, investing in it, our own uh, profits. And we believe that it might be one of the very safe ways that we guide the ways we are uh, actually dealing with technology, technologies and with the customers. And we are not relying or we are not uh, in a situation to be dependent on foreign investments only. So that... Um, our partners uh, like Motorola, for example, and Thales uh, will be following us and helping us to establish in the region the similar or same solutions, even more advanced than it is the situation with the rest of Europe. Mergim, you have stated that you follow your heart and your intuition to guide your company's uh, strategy. How's that working for you and how optimistic are you about the future? Yeah, um, I like to revoice and paraphrase Steve Jobs very often. And um, that that's how it starts. I think everything you do in life, it has to start with some passion and heart. Otherwise, it makes no sense. In order to have that persistence and perseverance that Diana was talking about, I think it has to come from the heart. Otherwise, you will lo- lose the, uh, the persistence eventually. If you love it, you'll continue with decades until you make it. That's working very well so far. Um, I mean, we are in the middle of global recession. We expect that the light at the end of the tongue coming up soon, hopefully by the end of the year or or the second half of the year, depending on who you ask. But um, in terms of future, we believe the future is bright for a lot of reasons. We love what we do. We have a really great team. We are in an industry that's an ever growing. It's a demand that people need. It's value added to the society and more precisely, we plan, we are one of the fastest growing companies in Central Europe as per Deloitte, but we plan to be one of the biggest 
in the Western Balkans in our industry and sector, and that's um, in e-commerce primarily, but also certain software that we are building. And we are targeting NASDAQ IPO within the next four or five years or so. So the future looks really nice. This is uh, great to hear. I'm delighted to, to have this opportunity to chat, to talk with you, uh, Mergim and Diana. And uh, I wish you good luck. And also, um, you are pioneering in something that other more uh, investors should come in, in the region and invest there since... There is space, there is a good environment, there is climate, and especially, uh, Morgan mentioned it, there is a young English-speaking population that is not easy to find in other countries. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Edva. It was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you also for watching. You can always uh, be part of this conversation by writing and uh, following us at uh, AC Europe in Twitter.